Hey there, today I'm going to be doing something a little different. Gaumon recently reached out to me regarding a tablet review, and after some back and forth, they decided to send me their PD1220 tablet. The PD1220 is an 11.6 inch screen display tablet that costs 280 USD. Please note that it must be connected to a device in order to work. It can connect to a desktop computer, a laptop, or an Android phone. I won't be able to test out the tablet with a phone, but here's the list of devices supported if you're interested. I've heard good things about Gaumon, and I really like how affordable their tablets are, so I'm excited to give this one a try. You'll have to pardon my video quality, my setup for the unboxing was a guitar stand velcro strapped to my closet door with a phone balanced on top. I'm a professional, guys. The first thing in the box is of course the tablet, which is a nice size and surprisingly light. I could easily hold it with one hand. It's important to note that there are no hotkeys on this tablet, but I wasn't bothered by that since I never use hotkeys anyways. On the left side of the tablet, you have a thumbnail switch that adjusts the brightness and a headphone jack. On the right, you have one mini HDMI port and two Type-C ports. On top is the power button, and on the back, it has four rubber pads to stop the tablet from sliding around. The tablet comes with a flexible leather stand that doubles as a screen cover, so if you plan on taking your tablet around with you, your screen won't get all scratched up in your bag. Once you attach the cover to the tablet, you can roll it up and use it as a mini stand, which I'll show a clip of later. Next is the pen, which is battery free, so you don't have to worry about recharging it. While it doesn't have an eraser end like some other pens, it does have a customizable button on top. I usually set mine to right click for convenience. The pen holder comes with a little pen nib remover on the bottom and some engraved directions that I shoved upside down by mistake. If you gently pull off the bottom of the pen holder, you can access the eight extra pen nibs inside. In this little box, you can gently coax out your plugs. In this case, it's just the adapter, which you can use to plug the tablet into an outlet. Definitely use the adapter if you're using your tablet with a phone, otherwise it'll drain your battery in a few minutes. It comes with two sets of cords. First, the Type-C to dual USB-A cable. The red one is the power cord that plugs into your computer or the adapter. Then the HDMI cable, which has a fun little Velcro strap on it. Here's a clip of my last two brain cells trying to figure out how to pick up this packet. Inside are some accessories and odds and ends. First is a fingerless glove. I definitely recommend using a glove so you don't get oil or sweat on your screen. This glove is one size fits all, but surprisingly it fit me pretty well. I have small hands, so large hand havers be warned, it may not fit you. It also comes with a little cleaning cloth for your tablet screen, which is great to have if you own pets like me since their hair gets absolutely everywhere. And finally, it comes with a leather stand guide, a warranty card, and a user manual. When I tried to remove the protective film from the tablet, the tab ripped straight off. Uh-oh. But don't worry if this happens to you, I quickly realized it was only the sticker that ripped. You just need to gently work up the corner of the plastic with your nails, and then the film should come off just fine. I'm really happy with how effective the glare reduction is, since I find the reflections on my current tablet distracting. The leather stand was pretty easy to set up. After you stick it to the back, to turn it into a stand, you just need to roll it up into a triangle shape and prop up the tablet on it. Just be careful not to bump it forward like I did, or it might slip off. The box includes everything you need to get your tablet set up, along with a few extra accessories like the glove and the cleaning cloth. Overall, I'm happy with the quality of everything in the box, and I'm excited to try this tablet out. To download the driver, you just need to go to Gaumon's site, hit support, and then driver download. Scroll down and find the appropriate driver for the tablet model and computer system you're using. Hit download and then open the startup to begin setting up your driver. Now this is where I ran into a bit of trouble. After I installed the driver and opened the app, I couldn't continue setup because the app said device disconnected. I made sure I had the tablet plugged in correctly, I ran the app on an administrator, I tried both versions of the Windows driver on this site. Everything I could think to try, but nothing helped. I emailed Gamon and they advised me to uninstall the driver and then try the tablet without it. Surprisingly, the tablet connected and worked totally fine after I removed the driver. However, I noticed that the pen would register normally when I tested it in paint, but when I used Photoshop it wouldn't let me draw or use any tools. Back to Gamon I went, and they told me to try reinstalling Photoshop, which fixed the problem. 
trying to figure out why the driver and tablet weren't working was really frustrating, and honestly, I think it's strange that the tablet works better without its driver. I think it's definitely a notable problem, since using it without the driver renders all tablet and pen keys useless and prevents you from adjusting your pen sensitivity. However, I do want to thank the Gaumon employee who got back to me so quickly and helped find a solution. I still don't understand why the driver wasn't working, but I am able to use the tablet now. If you have trouble with the drivers like I did, here's the quick breakdown of what worked for me. And with that done, your tablet is ready to use. In part 2 of my review, I'll be making a speed paint of Lerlier, explaining my art process, and discussing my experience drawing with the tablet.